It's an unfortunate truth that the history of video games is littered with characters who are callously cast aside by their creators. For whatever reason, game developers have a notorious habit of wiping beloved characters from the board and replacing them with inferior counterparts. Thankfully, in most cases, the discarded characters were later picked up, dusted off, and apologetically reinstated when their replacements turned out to be wildly, wildly unpopular. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 awesome video game characters replaced in sequels. Number 10 Martial Law Tekken 3 Back in 1999, Tekken 3 made the bold choice to replace a number of its predecessors' cast. This was done to offer a clean slate and entice new fans into the fold. Given that the game sold over 8 million copies, making it the highest selling one on one fighter in history, it's safe to say that the strategy worked. However, while many of Tekken 3's newcomers would become staples of the franchise, the same could not be said of Forrest Law, Tekken's forgotten son. Forrest replaced his father Marshall in Tekken 3 and was such a smash hit that he was immediately replaced by his dad in all subsequent installments of the franchise. Unfortunately for poor Forrest, his father completely overshadowed him as a personality. As his dad joke name suggests, Marshall Law is Tekken's comedic backbone. Whereas other fighters' storylines feature revenge killings, patricide, and global domination, Marshall's contain such emotionally weighty topics as an unexpectedly high mop bill and laxative laced pizza. Tekken 3's writers failed to give Forrest the kind of personality that could compete with his father's, and the end result is that he spent the past 20 odd years sitting on the sidelines. Number 9 Bowser Super Mario Bros. 2 Anyone who's been a gamer for more than five minutes can immediately draw up a mental picture of Bowser. With his fiery red mane, spiky shell, and dragon's face, Mario's perennial nemesis is one of gaming's most immediately recognizable characters. What, however, Bowser's replacement in Super Mario Bros. 2 is not. After Wart's one and only starring role, it's easy to see why Nintendo decided to bring Bowser back and cement his status as Mario's eternal rival. The Koopa King is a classy example of great character design. Wart, by contrast, is a fat toad in a cape and crown who looks like he was drawn up by an artist hurrying to beat the Friday bar queue. To add insult to injury, many of Wart's underlings in SMB2 would go on to become staples of future Mario games. bob -Oms, Shy Guys, and Birdo may have begun as Wart's henchmen, but all have since surpassed him as iconic members of the Mario cast. The Toad King is dead, long live the Koopa King. Number 8. Donkey Kong – Donkey Kong Country 3 what on earth did Rare have against poor old Donkey Kong? In the original Donkey Kong Country, Rare sent the lovable ape on a platforming adventure alongside his nephew Diddy Kong. When the game proved to be a smash hit, Rare made the same mistake as The Simpsons' early seasons did. Namely, they believed the youngest member of the family to be the star of the show. This meant that DKC2 shelved Donkey Kong himself as the elder ape suffered the indignity of being kidnapped and having to be rescued by Diddy and new character Dixie Kong. And while most people would think this would set the stage for Donkey Kong's big comeback in DKC3, Rare had other ideas. DKC3 saw both Donkey and Diddy placed firmly in the roles of dudes in distress, as the original duo were held captive by the game's big bad. This meant Donkey Kong once again missed out on a starring role in the series Bearing His Name, and players had to put up with a pair of irritating youngsters in his place, Dixie and the never seen again Kitty Kong. No wonder Donkey Kong 64's sublimely silly DK rap introduced Donkey Kong by saying he's finally back. Number 7. Big Boss – Metal Gear Solid 5 Replacing the expected lead with an entirely new hero is a trick so nice Hideo Kojima pulled it twice. The first time round was in Metal Gear Solid 2, where the beloved series icon Solid Snake was replaced with the initially irritating Raiden. The second time Kojima pulled a switcheroo was in Metal Gear Solid 5, where the final twist revealed that players had not been controlling the legendary big boss, but his body double. Unfortunately, only one of these twists gets proper justification. It's all about the timing, really. MGS2 replaced Snake with Raiden right after the first act, meaning the game gave itself plenty of time to explain the decision to swap protagonists. It may take a while to get there, but by the time the credits roll, you can perfectly understand why Kojima placed Raiden in Snake's shoes. 
MGS5's body swap, though, happens right at the end of the game. This means there's no time to process what's happened, and the final explanation, that Big Boss wanted to shake off his enemies, feels rushed at best and half-assed at worst. Number 6. Adam, Streets of Rage 3 Speaking of subpar writing, here's Streets of Rage. Much like Donkey Kong, Streets of Rage 1's Adam missed out on the sequel after being kidnapped by the big bad. By the time the third game rolled around, the same bad guy had upped his game and was threatening the thermonuclear annihilation of the protagonist's home city. Surely Adam would answer the call, save the day, and exact sweet revenge. Nope. According to the game's intro, Adam is too busy to help. And that's it. That's the total narrative justification given for Adam's absence. Granted, Adam does find some time in his busy schedule to help the heroes in the finale, but wow, too busy to help? Over 25 years later and we're still chuckling at the sheer lack of fuck given by whoever wrote that line. Kudos to you, you magnificent, lazy bastard. Number 5. Rosalina, Super Mario Galaxy 2 in 2007 Super Mario Galaxy, Nintendo added Rosalina to the Mario canon and she became an instant success, largely thanks to her emotional backstory. Told in picture book form throughout the course of the game, Rosalina's tale revealed a hitherto unseen talent from the Mario developers for tugging on the player's heartstrings. A beautifully illustrated fairy tale with a genuinely tear-jerking twist, it carved Rosalina's name into the hearts of Mario fans all over the world. So naturally, after ensuring their audience formed a strong emotional connection with the character, Nintendo replaced her in the sequel. Instead of Rosalina, Super Mario Galaxy 2 gave us Lubber, a fat purple star so utterly forgettable that the writer of this list completely forgot that he existed between their first and second playthroughs of the game. To be fair, Nintendo also seemed to have forgotten that he existed as well. While Rosalina has made playable appearances in various Mario spin-offs and the Smash Bros series, Lubber's only appearance of note is in Mario Golf, where he appears in the background of one character's victory celebration. That character, of course, being Rosalina. Sorry, Lubber, you may be a literal star, but Rosalina is a star. Number 4. Doom Slayer, Doom 3 If a series reboot is itself rebooted, was the series ever rebooted at all? Such philosophical ponderings are, of course, the bread and butter of the overtly highbrow Doom franchise. Oh wait, hang on. No, they're not. The Doom games are about bombing through sci-fi landscapes and eviscerating demons with wildly entertaining weaponry, a point entirely missed by the series' abysmal third entry. A dull, ponderous slog through endless series of gunmetal grey corridors, Doom 3's problems are embodied by its protagonist, a no-name marine completely overshadowed in the personality stakes by a face in a status bar. The original Doom Slayer's face was an ever-present part of the original game. Game's HUD, and its changing status depending on how the player was faring, brought a welcome touch of personality to Doom 1 and 2. By contrast, Doom 3 gave us little reason to care about its nameless marine. So little, in fact, that the developers dropped Doom 3 entirely from the series timeline, and brought back the original and best Doom protagonist. Number 3. Jill Valentine, Resident Evil 6 after sitting out 2009's Resident Evil 5 due to Wesker's mind control, you'd think Jill would come roaring back in the next installment. Unfortunately, you'd be wrong. Instead, Capcom decided to replace Jill with the instantly forgettable Pierce Nivens. And no, it's fine if you've completely forgotten about his existence. This decision still baffles today. Resi 5 made a huge deal out of the partnership between Jill Valentine and the boulder punching asshole Chris Redfield, so it seemed only natural for them to get the band back together in Resi 6. Instead, Jill was sidelined yet again so Chris could be joined by the blandest character in the Resi universe. Incredibly, if you discount the Resi 3 remake, it's been more than 20 years since Jill was a playable character in a numbered Resident Evil title. He is hoping the Master of Unlocking makes her triumphant return in Resi 9. Number 2. Cortana, Halo Infinite Halo Infinite was a welcome return to form for the venerable franchise. Its open world setup was the perfect environment for the chaotic and improvisation heavy gunplay that defines the series, and it's undoubtedly the best Halo since original developers Bungie left the series. Having said that, its story is really, really bonkers. 
Case in point, it's treatment of Cortana. At the end of Halo 5, Master Chief's former AI bestie had gone rogue and was hell-bent on bringing the galaxy under her digital heel. An intriguing plot point and one that could have fueled an entire new trilogy. Except that by the time Halo Infinite starts, she's already dead, and Master Chief is given an exact copy of her, minus the genocidal tendencies. So what the hell was the point in having her go all Emperor Palpatine in the first place? Why go to all the trouble of killing her off in Halo 4 and reviving her as a galactic overlord in Halo 5, only to replace her with her factory standard clone in Halo Infinite? It just smacks of frantic retconning. Number 1. Almost Everyone – Street Fighter 3 The first entry in this article discussed how Tekken 3 successfully introduced its new cast of replacement characters to the world, in a manner that appeased older fans and brought in new ones. It had a good teacher in Capcom, who two years prior to Tekken 3's release, showed how not to replace famous characters in a franchise. Street Fighter 2 had one of the greatest rosters of any game ever made, stuffed with gaming icons like Chun-Li, Guile and M. Bison, the latter of whom inspired the greatest ever performance in a video game adaptation. Street Fighter 3's fighters, on the other hand, failed to inspire the same level of devotion in the gaming public. Indeed, such was their antipathy that Street Fighter 3 only sold around 1,000 arcade cabinets. By way of contrast, the original Street Fighter 2 sold about 60,000. So why did Tekken succeed where Street Fighter failed? Because contrary to the popular adage, familiarity breeds contentment. Tekken 3's replacements were familiar variations of classic characters. Street Fighter 3's bunch of weirdos, however, were totally separate from Street Fighter 2's cast and suffered from off-puttingly bizarre designs. What was up with Necro? When coupled with the game's punishingly deep combat, Street Fighter 3 managed to alienate older fans and frighten away any newcomers to the series. And seriously, what was up with Necro? That is the end of our list today, but let me know down in that comment box if you can think of any other awesome video game characters replaced in sequels when they probably shouldn't have been. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonald, but make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more gaming goodness.